Hey guys, Joshua Kadamu here, and you know, I've done glimpses of mouth editing and things like that, but today I'm going to show you how to draw the mouths, and this is specifically for uh, humanoid characters where the jaw should open up and down. Something that's different about our mouth animation than a lot of other people's is that our jaws actually move. Not actually, but they move in the animation, and so you're going to learn how to do that today which is, you know, kind of a big deal. It's uh, one of our secrets, one of the amazing things we do here. It has its weaknesses, but it also has its strengths. For this, you're gonna need GIMP. I'm running on 2.6, which is probably pretty outdated. And I've already got my picture. I've already cropped it to what I want it to be. In fact, I think I opened the wrong picture, so I'll open this picture with GIMP. There we go. Get my thing there. We need to zoom in on the mouth because that's where we're doing all of our work. And what we're going to need is the free select tool. I haven't done this in about two years because my health has been pretty bad. I'm getting back into animation. So see here, this is kind of where the jawline meets everything else. Hopefully you can see my mouse, because I don't have one of those amazing programs that does stuff. We kind of want to find the edge of the jaw lines. And this guy might actually be rather hard to do it on. So you select the jaw line. We don't want the neck, but we want the whole jaw. So even over here, it looks like we out there, so we fix that. Then we come across here. And we try and follow this mouth. And so we've selected this whole jaw line. See that there. We copy this. Go down to copy. This shadow might present a problem, but we're going to continue with the tutorial anyways. And we get, click on our, our brushes. We're going to need a large circle. And I have a color that's like a deep dark red. And you can make that yourself with this color picker over here. Seems that moves a little too close and took away some of your visibility. There we go. Now we need to draw mouths. Now this isn't the actual mouth that we'll use in animation and see this over here? That's probably just too far. So we'll hit Control Z. We'll start over. So the lips go a little further than the mouth actually does. Your mouth doesn't actually open that wide. It opens more up and down than wide. You need things to be fairly even. And if the bottom is kind of huge, that's okay. That's not too bad. Now that's not our actual mouth. Um, it's what, you, you'll see. So we go in here, grab the fuzzy brush, a small one, there we go. We are going to need an off-white, which we're gonna want a color picker for. And the best way to get an off-white is to actually go to the eyes. And just select until you get something lightish colored. Because that way, it's matching the eye. If the eyes are supposed to be white, what you're getting for the teeth, because that's what we're about to make, will be white. Those aren't very white teeth. You might want a little lighter than that. That's pretty good. So now we have a top row of teeth. He's not shouting, so we'll probably never see his bottom teeth, actually. We'll just see the top. 
Hit it. Now go down to paste. Remember how we cut the mouth? Now we're pasting it. There's our mouth. Go up and get the little crosshairs arrow, which is the move tool. Click on that. Now we're gonna use the keyboard. The actual keyboard. Find the down key. Press it once. Two, three, four, five. There's one mouth. So then go save this. Save it as M1. This is a multi, um, there's many steps to this whole process. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're gonna save that as mouth two, or M2. Again, hit down on the space bar, not the space bar, uh, the D, the, the arrow keys. These guys right here. My keyboard's on a short leash, so it's not moving very far. One, two, three, four, five. Save it again. M3. And I generally do five mouths to be safe. One, two, three, four, five. That way I can cover many ranges of vocals and loudness as might need be needed. Two, three, four, five. Better to have it than to not have it later, because editing these later is going to be difficult. This is your standard. I mean, you could save it as a GIMP project, and that way you never actually lose it, but I've never had to really do that. Now I close this. Open it up again. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got the original picture and the picture we're working off of. Oops, that's paint. We don't want paint. We do everything in GIMP. Let's open that up in GIMP. Make it big again. Now around this time, I'll take a break from mouths just real quick to do the eyes. How do we do the eyes? Um, we grab the color picker. Looks like we've got some of our screen again. Grab something above the eyes. That's reasonably dark. Fuzzy brush. Make an oval. Make an oval. Cover up those eyes completely. Then go get black. And uh, add the apple jittery over here. And we're going to want this on a ridiculously small scale. And we're going to want it to be faded, I think. I can't remember where we get... Opacity. Opacity. Up here. I should have done that the whole time. It's kind of hard to do this. Be editing and doing this. So we want our opacity about 50%. working on the eyes and because this has a slight apple jittery it has a slightly uneven effect and if you decide your eyebrows are, or your eyelashes are too dark you just go increase the opacity and we save that as um, blink That way, when we're doing mouth animation, we can actually have our character blink. That would be nice. So, open up M1. I'm gonna open that up with GIMP. I suppose we could just be grabbing these from GIMP, but, oh well. Let's zoom in on it. Now initially, this doesn't look too bad. Kinda looks like it's going, Arr! but there is a line here. If you can see it, there's a there's a line here where we have this gap where things are going. That is the downside of this method, but this is how we deal with it. It's not a perfect fix, but um, it works pretty well. We want the smudge tool, not the blur tool, but the smudge. And we're gonna need a fuzzy brush. A brush that's about that size or whatever size looks good and we just start smudging upwards 
it's kind of like a plastic surgery making those scars go away. Now this usually works. Occasionally um, things won't look so great and that's why we save this as M1A. That way if M1A doesn't look good we can go back and get M1 and fix it. So that one looks good. We'll open this one with GIMP which is, oops, that's M1A. We don't want M1A. We want M2. We're going to do that again. Now it's more profound here on this one. Try and zoom in the same amount each time. Helps keep everything consistent. And don't change the measurements on your blur tool. Just keep them the same. So we just want to blur these lines away. Make his uh, mouth animation smoother. Like I said, this is not perfect. It does have its downsides. Occasionally it will look a little weird. Um, but more often than not, it looks great. And the jaw actually moves. If you actually watch yourself in the mirror as you talk, your jaw moves up and down. And it moves up and down um, based on you know what kind of syllables you're saying and things like that. And so I really like having it. I think it adds a lot of realism. Now, just explain that twice, and hopefully you've seen it okay. I keep having the camera too, too close, but I am telling you what tools to use. So we have M1, M1A, M2, M2A. Now here's M3. M3 we do usually two things with. We'll do what we just showed you how to do. So we need to zoom in on it. Whoops, Not zooming out. Whoops. Work with me, GIMP. Not against me. Let's zoom in on his mouth. You can see that line has become more profound um, as we've moved the, the face. Now, because his lip kind of goes uh, like this, it's a little harder on this one. I guess first, though, we need to finish making our, our A mouth. I'm going to get rid of these lines. Just smudge them away. If only women could do this with their wrinkles. I just smudged into the mouth, so I just undid that. You don't want to take it too far because you can lose stuff. Then you'll start to have this little edge, this little triangle edge, and you got to blur that in so that that triangle isn't there anymore. I might mean blurring down a little bit. You can see it's nice and taken care of. Okay, that's pretty good. So now we'll save this as. I'm about to teach you something new as well, so don't leave yet. M3A. There we go. I always close these because that way you're not ending up working on the, you know, saving over your work. So we need to open M3A again because we need to make what I call an ooh mouth. So we open that with GIMP. We've already dealt with the jawline and everything else. You can see if you look really, really closely, you can sort of see there's a line there. Then animation, it moves so fast that most of the time, not a big deal. Now we need to make an ooh mouth because most of these mouths are all going to be the same shape like this. But there are syllables like ooh and you and Oh, and things like that where the mouth needs to change its shape. 
And so we're just going to need the blur tool again. We don't want to change its size because we still have the other mouse to do. But we just start pulling from the side and blurring in to create a mouth that is ooing. Kind of where the lips are closer together on the sides and things like that. And he, over here I kind of pulled into the into the red too much. So we'll just hit control Z. We'll start over with that. I'm still using the blur tool. I never changed my settings on the blur tool. Now it's kind of uneven at the moment. This side came in further than this side, so I went too far. Well, I lost you guys for a quick second because the other camera's uh, memory card got full, so I just switched cameras, splicing these videos together now. So we're still in GIMP. I finished... Um, blurring in around the mouth so you can see that the shape of the mouth has changed kind of as if he was saying you you know if you if you say the word you right now you stop your mouth on the you you'll and feel your lips your mouth shape has changed and so this allows us to get different syllables being said without just the same mouth same mouth same mouth you know it actually gives us some variety here now don't save this as M3A. Make sure you save it as ooh. That's what I always name it. Ooh. That's my ooh mouth. Save it. There we go. Close it. That way we don't end up working on the same project. So far. Make these just uh large for us. We've got our blink, we've got our crop surrender, which is what we're basing everything off of, M1, M1A, which has been edited, M2, M2A, which has been edited, where we, we blended the mouth together, M3, M3A, we've also got O down there, and we've got M4 and M5. In case I, uh, camera wasn't showing this off well enough, I'm going to show M4 and M5 become M4A and M4, M5A. So at this point, there won't be anything new, really, but I will try and give better looks at what I'm doing, things like that. So we're gonna, if you've already gotten this, feel free to log off or keep watching if you like. So we're going to zoom in on the mouth, and you can see on M4, you can definitely see that jaw lininess. That's why this is so important. You can't see it very well on the first one, on M1, but trust me, you should fix it. See our brush is about this size. You can make it bigger, but you don't want to grab too much of the cheek and pull it up. You just want to get what's here. So we're using the small little brush. And again, we're using a circle fuzzy from the blur tool. Actually, that's the smudge tool, sorry. Blur, bad. Smudge, good. You have a smudge on your face. We're using Circle Fuzzy 17 at the moment. 7.74 scale, 100% opacity. No fade out or anything, just, just that. Music brought to you by my cell phone alarm in the background. I'm trying to do this while watching through the camera. It's harder. There's a little scar thing right here. Some character on this guy. And that's up here too. So we may end up having to go back into all of our pictures. Because this may turn into two. And just smudge that out on every single picture. But we'll wait till the mouth animation is done to see if it's even an issue. 
It may be. It may not be. You just go at these until the lines aren't there anymore. The camera's in the way of my actual seeing what I'm doing. So I'm watching the camera through the camera's lens as I do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking around now. You can see now everything is much smoother than it was. Let's compare that though. This is what our mouth looks like now. M4. This is what it did look like. Let's look at the GIMP one again with the smudge tool. Way better. Way better. I don't have this guy mouth animated yet, but um, you can see how it's going. I went to, I clicked at the file and hit save as. This popped up. I'm going to change it from M4 to M4A. So we're saving as a new file. Go down here, hit save. It brings up this thing, save as a JPEG. Always make sure it's on 100% quality. No reason to do it at less. So we've got some that done. That pretty much covers it. All I have left is M5, and it's kind of hard to do this through the camera, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to do M5 myself. But that's all the different aspects to it that there are. Give a quick slideshow. Looks like something went wrong with M3. See how it's way over here? I think that's because I grabbed it and pulled it. So we'll have to do M or M3A again. That's why you save these. So you can watch as the mouth is animating. But you can see that something went wrong with M3A because it suddenly goes way over there. And you're like, whoa! So we will actually end up deleting M3A, redo M3A. Not a big deal because we still have M3. That's the reason why we keep it. I'll zoom in here. There's the blink. Eyes open. Blink again. Eyes open. Blink again. Eyes open. Mouth starts to open. So he's talking. And we can see the big difference between those lines that we've edited out. Looks like I'm zoomed in a little too much for the camera to focus. There you go. There's the lines. The M5. That's, I guess that's not a good example. Let's take a look at M4. M4 with the lines. M4 without. M5, which hasn't been done yet. And this is how I draw the mouse for Gundam Father a piece. Not sure where that ooh mouth went to. There it is. Oh, looks like the ooh mouth is off too, because we based that off of uh, number M3A. Well, in the rare chance that that one happened. <laughs> Looks like we'll have to do the ooh mouth again as well, because it's off. But the mouths are great. Everything's fine there. We just need to uh, fix that one thing. And like I said, that's why we keep the copies. I hope this has been helpful to you guys. I know it's been kind of long, but I hope that it will be helpful as you seek to do mouth animation and things in your stuff. And anybody who does mouth animation different, please uh, make a tutorial video. I'd love to see how you guys do mouth animation. This is how uh, I came up with, with the help of my friend R.C. Mangan and Josiah Oliver, and together um, with all everybody's input, this is kind of what we came up with. I like it. The jaw actually moves. Of course, that's a bad example, but 
Yeah. See, the jaw actually moves when he's talking. And I like that. Well, make sure to stay subscribed for more. Catch you guys later.